Sir, come to level kato. Tinga na. Tinga na, Dote. Okay, good. Eh, awak seorang juga? Yang lain tak ada lagi? Uh, yang lain uh, on the way masuk, Dote. Okay, okay. Nanti kau cukup betul eh. Ada ada tu. Okey okey tu. Tengah kontak orang.
one more person, Dr. Uh, he's uh, currently joining in the chat. And uh, Dr. Sohi Harun is already inside. The whole, now I think the whole group is already inside. Good. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Kita mulakan dengan umur kitab al-Fatihah. Ya. Okay, without further ado, kita continue lah dengan uh, previous presentation. Okay, dengar kan? Dengar tu. Okay, okay. So, um, we last stop with, I think that the next presenter will be ni eh, Miss Wah Mucu eh? Ya. Okay, so aku bukan eh? Tak nak bukan, okay. Yeah. Okay, good, good. good, good. Whiteboard, ah, mending. Whiteboard. Screen yang screen. Screen screen. Ini ada whiteboard. Tak tak ada punya ni. Oh foto. Apa ni? Tak tak tak. Aku tengah nak cari. Ada ada. Doctor dependent, cyanotic, um, asyanotic, hepatic disease. Hmm. Apa nama title yang korang kata? Yang syndrome associated with congenital heart disease. Ada tak? Eh, ada. Tak, uh, dekat Buka yang presentation tu. Dekat presentation yang ni. Betul? Ha. Slow. Okay. Yang nombor enam ke enam ke tujuh ke? So mimi, bah mimi ya ni. Ah, ah itu. Alright. Okay. Yang ni mesin sih, ah just tekan satu lah. Alright. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am Miswa. So I will present. Uh, about syndrome that associated with congenital heart disease. There will be four syndrome that we'll, we'll discuss today. So, uh, the first one is, uh, dengar tak? Semua dengar kan? Dengar, dengar, dengar. Okay. So, the first one is William syndrome. So, just, okay, so this is the features of a patient with a William syndrome. So, what is William syndrome? It's actually a rare disease, uh, which is uh, an autosomal dominant. Uh, usually, uh, oh, how this William syndrome occur is actually due to the small deletion of the chromosome during the gene uh, gene process lah. and the chromosome that uh, affected is the seven uh, long arm seven eh, seven long uh, short arm seven uh, seven sh short arm eleven point two three twenty three so um so what is the congenital heart disease that commonly associated with William syndrome is actually uh, the supravalvular aortic uh, valve stenosis, the most common one. And then uh, it also can uh, 
they also can have uh, pulmonary vastinosis as well as peripheral uh, pulmonary stenosis. So what uh, what actually, uh, how this uh, aortic stenosis happen in Williams syndrome? Just gambar just, next. So how this actually the aortic stenosis happen in <laughs> aortic stenosis happen in uh, William syndrome is actually due to the uh, because of the small uh, because of the small deletion of the chromosome just now. So it, uh, this uh, deletion is also as uh, cause mutation uh, to the elastin gene. Uh, so uh, what is the uh, role of this elastin gene is actually for elasticity of the tissue. So uh, in William syndrome, when there is a deletion of this chromosome, it's actually a cause manifestation of the elastin atropathy. So this elastin atropathy causing the thickening of the atrial walls uh, then cause the narrowing of the lumen of the iota and also its branches. So usually uh, this elastin atropathy manifests characterized by the low level, uh, low level of the elastin as well as the hyperproliferation of the smooth muscle cells uh, at the um, at the iota. And then this abnormal proliferation causing the narrowing of the um, commonly aside, uh, the common side is the proximal ascending iota. However, it also can affect uh, other parts uh, such as uh, the branches of the iota as well as pulmonary and coronary artery as well. So um, that's all for the congenital heart disease that associated with William syndrome. So other features that we can see in the William syndrome, uh, syndrome is actually the pathetic pneumonia is the elfin facies of the uh, pa uh, of the patient, which is um, characterized by the craniofacial abnormalities as well as uh, we can look at the prominent forehead of the patient and the widely spaced of the eye as well as the small mandible and patient also can have dental hypopatia. And one more thing about Fillion syndrome, apart from the congenital heart disease, uh, we also can diagnose patient if patient uh, during the uh, infant, when patient have suddenly have uh, hyperglycemia, uh, hypercalcemia, uh, hypercalcemia, high calcium level, uh, usually idiopathic. We doesn't know what is the causes of the calcium, uh, the rise in the calcium, so we can suspect patient to have William syndrome. Mm. This all uh, for the William syndrome. Uh, actually, William syndrome. Uh, yeah. Usually, actually, the main. Uh, a lot of these William children is actually detected. Uh, not at birth, now, unless mm -hmm. if they presented. Uh, with calcium problem. Mm. Uh, so hypercalcemia. Uh. Mm -hmm. No, actually, usually they are presented with cardiac problem problem. The mm -hmm. main thing is actually murmur. Murmur mm -hmm. and also they, they have murmur very early at birth. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I, I mentioned last, last class that uh, murmur at birth is very rare. Uh, especially if it is due to uh, structural heart disease. Kan? Mm -hmm. Because murmur from septal defect, kan? ASD, VSD or PDA, they did not appear at birth. Okay, they appear later. Uh, usually after, like PDA, usually after once your pulmonary pressure is slightly reduced, then you can hurt the murmur. Lah. Earliest will be around day two, day three of life. That, that be, that, that's the earliest. Lah. Uh, PDA early, quite earlier, maybe day two, day three, but VSD, ASD, sometimes after a week of life, but you can hear the murmur. But mm. murmur, because of tenosis, especially valve near problem or uh, vessel near problem, such as pulmonary stenosis, uh, mm. uh, like this one, uh, suprabarbular aortic stenosis, kan? Uh, this can appear very early. Mm. Okay, because the turbulence occur very early, lah. as soon as the blood uh, circulating, then they start to have murmur. Mm. But actually, the main, the main problem with William. It's actually, they are quite well actually at birth, uh, except if they got problem with calcium. Mm. Hypercalcemia can cause, they rarely develop seizure, tapi biasa incidental lah. Hypercalcemia tu incidental. Mm. But not much can be done for hypercalcemia. It will resolve as time goes. Mm. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. The infant style je. Uh, but this is quite common now. William is quite common. Mm. Because later on, they will develop mental retardation semua tu lah. Mm. Okay. 
Okay, okay, makes sense. Uh, okay. So, uh, I would like to add, uh, so oh. what is the symptom of hypercalcemia? Uh, if uh, one of it is a loss of appetite, irritability, weakness, easy fatigability, as well as abdomen and muscle pain. So, if patient look irritable, of it, so you can suspect also that you have to have high calcium, high calcium as well. Because, mm. because they are, they are, these are actually detected very early on mm -hmm. during the period. Mm -hmm. So most of the time they are quite asymptomatic. Sometimes you just mm -hmm. take blood and then noted, oh patient ni ada, uh, got heart problems. We know there's structural defect. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, because the facial features are not that prominent at birth. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. And then noted, you, know, you can see, oh hypercalcemia. Then they, that, that's when you detect it, you know, you suspect William. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. okay. Next test. So the second um second syndrome mm. is I will talk about is Turner syndrome. So what is the Turner syndrome? Is actually the absence of one set of genes from the short arm of one X chromosome, meaning that they only have uh one X, one X. Uh, so as O lah forty five X. So uh what is the next test? What is the uh, most common uh heart defect that occur in Turner syndrome is coagulation of the aorta, the most common one. However, the patient also can have bicuspic aortic valve as well as uh, post-tenotic aortic dilatation with aneurysm. However, this is usually occur later in life. So, how this actually the congenital heart or coagulation of the aorta the aorta occur in Turner syndrome, some uh, hypothesis has been postulated in several articles whereby they mention that this origin of the congenital heart disease is related to the lymphatic hyperplasia or lymphatic obstruction in utero. Because uh, if we can actually in Turner syndrome, usually we can suspect uh, the baby or the infant um, mm -hmm. To have um, Turner syndrome, whereby we can see uh, during ultrasound, ultrasound antenatally, whereby there will be present of the fetal edema at the neck, hands, or feet, or there will also present of the cystic hygroma. So this patient usually uh, we can suspect them to have Turner syndrome. So how this uh, coagulation of the aorta occur in Turner syndrome is actually due to the lymphatic obstruction whereby this occur in utero and then this dilated lymphatic vessels uh, causing obstruction around the aortic root and then cause the compression uh, of the aorta later cause aortic deformities. So this uh, compression and also obstruction causing the low uh, blood flows uh, ac across the arch of the aorta as well as the isthmus uh, that contribute to the aortic coagulation. Uh, this is that's all for the Turner syndrome and how this coordination of the of the aorta occur in Turner syndrome. And some of the uh, features that we can see in Turner syndrome, one of it is a uh, short stature. Uh, usually, the cardinal features of the uh, Turner syndrome is the short stages. Um, and sometimes, uh, this is the only uh, abnormality that we can see in the children as well, the short stature. However, the patient also can have the neck webbing. You can see in the pictures, right? From the pictures, there is a neck webbing of the neck or the thick neck. Um, and then, yeah, so, uh, and then uh, patient also can have other features uh, such as uh, delayed PBT, uh, the infertility, hypothyroidism, uh, and so on. A lot more lah. Mm. Okay, good, good. Actually, Turner mm. syndrome is not that uncommon. Okay, uh, mm. the most common among this, the four is actually Down syndrome. Second is Turner. Mm. Turner and George is about the same. I think I see Turner more than George lah. Uh, mm -hmm. And then William, uh, last I've seen a few William juga. So actually Turner, uh, Turner is a is a chromosomal disorder kan? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a tri it's a it's a monosomy. So it's a monosomy X. Mm -hmm. uh, so Turner, the cardinal features at birth is actually the edema, peripheral edema, edema. Mm -hmm. but it will resolve after a while. So you have to have high degree of suspicion lah. Because the rest are not that that uh, prominent. The other features are not that pro prominent. But in children, you can have Turner in your exam. Okay, Turner is easily available. They can, they've got a lot of symptoms. Uh, they've got a lot of signs uh, to be listed in the exams. Right? And then they are quite well. So actually the main prominent features of Turner definitely is the short stature. Mm. So, uh, so they, they are eligible for growth, growth hormone therapy. Mm. And on top of that is the delayed puberty, okay? Uh, because most of them are sterile, lah. They cannot 
Uh, so most of them have problem with puberty. Uh, and then at birth, uh, as you correctly mentioned, the coag and coag mm. antenna is usually very resistant to uh, to stenting. So usually you stand it, you stand the you stand or you balloon. Uh, you you did a balloon dilatation of the coag. Uh, I mean minimally invasive procedure lah through NGO kan. You did NGO and then you do you did balloon. Uh, uh, balloon uh, dilatation, but usually it will occur. Okay, it's not like the structure, the, the other non syndromic coats where usually you balloon it once and then it's settled. Lah. Tapi tena, biasa we balloon it twice and then if it's not effect, not, not, uh, I mean, it's not permanent, permanently repaired, then you have to surgically resect lah, the uh, coat. Mm. Okay, lah, next, next, down. Other question? Other, any other questions? Tapi tenia, you have to know in out, especially the clinical mm -hmm. science. They've got a lot of clinical science. Hey, uh, doctor, I would like, I would like to ask. Huh. Um, for like Down syndrome, usually clinical, but for things like William, Turner, mm -hmm. D. George, do you have to do like fish? Okay. Down syndrome antenna is just conventional karyotyping. You can di diagnose Down syndrome antenna unless mm -hmm. uh, in some situation where it is actually uh, the the what you call it the not non dejection non dejection you can detect by uh, conventional karyotyping. The what you call it there's three type and uh, chromosomal disorder few causes. First, non disjunction is the most common, and then we've got the mosaicism. Mosaicism also you can detect by conventional karyotyping. The other one is the stable translocation. The stable translocation, sometimes karyotyping might miss. This is when you need fish, lah. then you have to do fish. Uh, fish, lah. Uh, fish for down and turner. For this George, you have to do fish. You have to do fish, fish study for this George. Catch 22. Uh, William, William, uh, actually conventional karyotyping can detect uh, William, but most of the time we use fish lah for William. Mm. We've got a panel for all these for, for this syndrome, so it's easily diagnosed. It's just a cost of money. Tapi duit pun rasa dalam 200 ringgit je, the cost. So it's not that uh, Sorry, sorry Dr. Meaning, uh, for uh, clean, on, only Down syndrome, usually we, we diagnose clinically, but for the rest, we need, can we do clinical also or? Uh, tenor, tenor, we usually diagnose, uh, of course Down syndrome also we diagnose by karyotyping. Karyo. I mean, oh. At birth, we diagnose by clinical. Uh, there's no urgency oh. to diagnose Down syndrome because it can easily diagnose by uh, karyotyping. So do tenor, tenor is actually diagnosed by uh, clinical most of the time. Because you oh. don't need urgent. William also, you don't need urgent. All this, actually these three, William, Down and Turner, they don't need an urgent uh, genetic investigation. Most of the time, mm. they are like those by clinical. After they discharge, then we, we arrange for karyotyping. Then uh, after discharge, then usually we will confirm the diagnosis. But for mm. D. George, it has to be confirmed early because uh, some, some D. George baby with very severe uh, and normally they, they, they may not survive long. Those with very complex congen uh, heart structure, heart defect, these are the ones that we need urgent, urgent uh, fish, lah, fish uh, probe to D. George. Fish investigation to D. George. The rest uh, doesn't need, uh, most of them are quite mild, they can be discharged uh, life. Lah. Actually, William and Tanner, most of them, they live they discharge well. Uh, Down syndrome actually 50-50. If they admitted at birth, uh, actually maybe about 20% will not discharge alive. 20% will not discharge alive. Because a lot of complications. Down syndrome, they've got a lot of complications. Rather than William and Turner, most of them are quite okay. Discharge, George depending. Discharge, it, it depends on the severity of the heart problem. Now. But usually the heart problem cause uh, difficulty like in managing the church, but other problems mm. usually okay lah. 
Okay, okay, next, next, next. Okay, ada soalan? Hmm, uh, ada apa ni more question. The, the next presenter, uh, she will Down open syndrome, the... Down syndrome and George ni? Down syndrome and the George, uh, the presenter macam... Orang lain? Okay. <laughs> oh. oh, okay, orang lain. Uh, dia, dia online, online. Dia different person. So, um, oh. later we'll go back to the Down syndrome and the George. Doctor, is it okay, Doctor? Okay, okay. Uh -huh. Okay, all right. Yeah, so here. Mm. Uh, okay, all right. So here. Yes, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, yes. So I'll be, uh, I'll be presenting uh, about oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. So, um, First, firstly, uh, this curve uh, describes and sketch this curve is very important uh, because it, it describes how the blood carries oxygen inside our body. So the first thing I want you to look at uh, this curve is the, uh, the shape of the curve. So the shape of the curve is actually S in shape, uh, sigma shape. So this is because of uh, the property of hemoglobin in which uh, uh, when it binds to one oxygen molecule, it will uh, become easier for the next uh, unit, for the next uh, molecules of oxygen to bind. So we know that uh, in any uh, hemoglobin um, molecule, uh, we have four subunits. So this depends on the type of hemoglobin, HbA, HbA2, or HbF. So for example, uh, in HbF, we have uh, alpha subunit. Uh, two alpha subunits uh, as well as two uh, gamma subunits. So uh, if, uh, let's say, uh, one of the sub, uh, subunits uh, bind, to, um, bind to one oxygen molecule, uh, this is, um, it will become easier for the next uh, molecule, uh, oxygen molecule to bind. Uh, for example, uh, first, because uh, if um, uh, oxygen molecule, uh, sorry, hemoglobin molecule doesn't bind to anything, we call this uh, as a tense configuration. So uh, during this, uh, when this configuration occurs, it's uh, very difficult for any oxygen molecule uh, to start to bind. But when the uh, oxygen, uh, when we increase the PO2, so the the, uh, the oxygen will be easier for, uh, to bind to the hemoglobin. So this is why the, the curve is uh, sigma in shape. And then the next thing that I want you to see is that the curve is kind, kind of circular, kind of flat uh, at very high PO2. So this means uh, when uh, the, um, the hemoglobin is uh, saturated with um, oxygen, uh, it becomes very difficult uh, for more oxygen molecules to bind. The only way we can increase this is by things like uh, blood transfusion and so on. So uh, in this, um, curve, so I want you to focus on one curve, uh, for example, the, the blue curve is the normal one. So at the higher PO2, uh, this is uh, where usually, usually this is, uh, represents um, the lung, where we have a very high PO2. So at very high PO2, we have a very saturated uh, hemoglobin. So as we go down, as we go, down, go to the left at a low PO2, uh, we see that the, the curve uh, becomes steep, right? So uh, this represents uh, the tissue, tissue unloading. So the, as, uh, if you take a look at the uh, y-axis, the, the lower level of y-axis, that represents uh, the unloading of uh, hemoglobin, unloading of oxygen, sorry. So uh, there are a few uh, uh, factors that uh, Sometimes uh, the, the body will um, shift the curve to the right or to the left, and this depends on a few factors. So if uh, the body shifts the curve to the right, um, see, uh, if you uh, take any given, any PO2, let's say uh, at 50, you can see that uh, at Y exists, it is equal to 80, 80 something, 81 to 82 uh, of this, uh, saturation. But uh, if you shift the curve to the right, then the y axis will become lower. Uh, so at 50 PO2, you can see that it reduces to uh, 70 something. So this means there will be more oxygen unloading from, uh, from the lung. 
So uh, among the factors that uh, that uh, increase the oxygen unloading, or uh, in other words, uh, uh, shift the, the curve to the right, uh, we can remember this by uh, a mnemonic uh, called KDEP phase right. So C for CO2, um, CO2, uh, A for acidity or increase in H plus or increase in H plus or reduce uh, reduction in pH value. Uh, D for 2, 3 BTG. Uh, which is um, a byproduct of glycolysis, E for exercise and T for temperature. Anything that increases this value will shift the curve to the right. In other words, it will cause uh, more unloading of oxygen. Uh, and if the, uh, if the body shifts the curve to the left, that means uh, the, the, the green one, the green curve, uh, that, uh, that means uh, the, uh, the hemoglobin, uh, the oxygen has higher hemoglobin, uh, higher affinity with hemoglobin, so there will be less uh, unloading. So this occurs in certain situations. It's actually the vice versa of uh, aforementioned uh, factors, but also includes uh, things like HDF because um, in HDF you want to take, uh, you want to have higher affinity for oxygen molecules so that you can take oxygen molecules from uh, maternal circulation. Uh, I guess. Uh, that's all from uh, for my presentation. You good? Good. Any question? Any question, guys? Understand, kan? Uh, sorry, sorry. Nak tanya. Um, usually, on HBF two, they will um, lose from the newborn bila? Macam like when? When does it? When is it depleted? Uh, usually uh, around six months uh, of uh, six months of age. Uh, so uh, we know that HDF is produced uh, within the first six months. So if the patient has uh, like two years uh, teaching, we have uh, if the patient has deep catalytic and so on, then they will start producing symptoms uh, from six months onwards because they cannot produce the TA, the adult form of hemoglobin. Okay. Thank you, sir. So. Thank you, sir. So, Harun. Okay. Okay, uh, so j j let me just uh, briefly summarize now. So we are concerned about the affinity, can When you look at the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve, we are concerned about the loading and unloading of oxygen or, or what we call it affinity of the oxygen. Okay, when you say shifted to the left, means uh, means the graph become the blue graph become the green one at the top. Okay, shifted to the left means more affinity to oxygen. So less likely to release oxygen from the hemoglobin. Okay, firm. Increased affinity means uh, at high temperature, at low temperature, at, uh, in infant with low DPG or infant with high pH and uh, al alkalosis, the oxygen tend to bind uh, stronger to the hemoglobin. So they, they I mean, uh, less, uh, is is. I mean, it's more difficult to release the oxygen to the tissue. Okay, therefore, even at high oxygen, okay, even at high concentration of oxygen, uh, it, therefore, at high, at lower concentration of oxygen, the SpO2 will be high. So if you look at the baby, right? because baby, because they've got fetal hemoglobin, compared to adult, fetal hemoglobin has higher affinity to oxygen. Therefore, if you look at a baby with SpO2 of, uh, 90%. Okay, you look at the baby with SpO2 of 90%. Okay, look at here. Uh, look at the graph. Okay, the PO2 is actually only about 50, 50 millimeter mercury. Okay, understand, kan? But if you get, uh, if you take uh, ABG of an adult with 90% saturation of oxygen, oxygen saturation, the PO2 will be around 60. 60, 70. Firm not? Okay, because baby, they just need less, they need less oxygen, okay, to become, to concentrate their hemoglobin, to increase the hemoglobin's uh, SpO2 concentration, to increase their SpO2. Okay, so what, what does this mean, okay? Uh, this means that if a baby is cyanose, okay, if a baby is cyanose, means the SpO2 is 80, for example, compared to adult, they have lesser oxygen. Okay, from that. 
they have lesser oxygen. With the same degree of cyanosis, they've got lesser oxygen in their blood. Because the PO2 is will be lower, uh, is lower than in a dog. However, so uh, so it seems like oh baby lagi bahaya lah if they sinus. The same degree of sinusis is more dangerous in baby. However, because baby got fetal hemoglobin, so the effect is equal. Okay, faham kan? So that's why Allah bagi dia fetal hemoglobin. Uh, therefore, even though they have less oxygen uh, in the blood, but they can still okay. Okay, macam tu lah. Okay, uh, and the other thing is, so I've, uh, we've mentioned earlier, definition of sinusis is when, okay, what is the definition of sinusis? Hari tu siapa yang present yang lady, kan, salah seorang uh, present hari tu kan? So what is the definition of sinusis? Uh, sinusis presented when there is more than 3 gram per deciliter of hemoglobin in the exogenated blood. Okay, okay. Uh, so sinusis is apparent, I mean you can see sinusis if more than 4 gram per deciliter of blood is not uh, oxygenized. Faham tak? So kalau dia ada 15 hemoglobin you, 15, 15 gram per deciliter, if you got 4 deoxygenated uh, hemoglobin, 4 gram deoxygenated hemoglobin in your blood, you will, be, you will become sinus. You will look sinus. Okay. Okay, however, okay, so macam mana kalau kita ada lower hemoglobin? Contoh kalau I ada uh, 10 hemoglobin. Okay. Okay, for example, uh, okay, let, let's see this. Okay, look at the curve, uh, the blue curve. Okay. If, if, the, if, got, if you got two adult, okay, two, two person uh, with a blood PO2 of, seven, of 100. Contoh, blood, eh, blood PO2 of 70. Okay. So you've got two person with blood PO2 of 70. Okay. Uh, of 70 lah, of 70 senang. 70 tak biasa. Okay, 60 lah senang, 60. Okay. If you got an adult with two adult with PO2 of 60. Okay. What is the SpO2? It's usually around 90 lah kan. 90, 89, 90 macam tu. So you've got two adult, similar adults. Uh, with PO2 of 60, okay, the saturation will be around 89, 89 to 90. Oh, ambil biru ni, the thick blue graph. So PO2 of 60, you get the SpO2 of around 90, kan? Okay, tapi if one, if the person A, the hemoglobin is 15, for example, okay. So chances are more of this hemoglobin because it's only 60 millimeter mercury of oxygen so more hemoglobin will be deoxygenized so this child this person with hemoglobin of 15 gram per deciliter he will look sinus even though the po2 is 60 but he will look sinus because there's a lot of hemoglobin to be concentrated so more hemoglobin will be deoxygenized uh, will be less concentrated okay faham kan tapi if another one got hb of 10 Chances are the saturation will be 100 because with 60, you can actually you can actually saturate almost all of the hemoglobin if you got only 10 hemoglobin. Faham tak? So the degree of anemia, the amount of uh, hemoglobin in the blood will actually affect your appearance, your sinusis, your sinusitic appearance. Okay, faham kan? Okay, that's why in baby, okay, baby they are born with Hemo, a lot of hemoglobin lah. Most of them got uh, normal hemoglobin in baby is around uh, 14 to 20 kan. So they've got a lot of hemoglobin. That's why when with a little drop, with a even with a uh, with small amount of drop in PO2, they can look sinus. But in a dog, even with the same degree of drop in PO2, we may not look sinus in a dog or in young, in older children. That's why when you when you are when you are doing examination, clinical examination, sometimes the child doesn't look sinus, okay, from outside because H, HB might be low, lah. So those children with scientific heart disease with low hemoglobin, they will ne they will not look sinus unless if you look prop look carefully at the mucosa, lah, Then you can detect the sinusis. But in the exam, if you just look at the child from outside you did not carefully look at the mucosa, especially the tongue, then you will miss the sinusis. Okay, 
Because with the SPO2 of 90, they won't become cyanose. Unless if they got polycythemia. Okay, from when? Okay, that, that's, that's a clinical significance huh? uh, of the hemoglobin dissociation curve. Okay, any question? Uh, doctor, so, uh, I have a uh, question. Uh, so, for example, for patient who has congenital, uh, who have cyanotic, cyanotic congenital uh, disease, they uh, usually have polycythemia, right, doctor? So, they are more likely to be cyanosis, but they are not hypoxic. Is it like that? Uh, no, because uh, their PAO2 will never more than 100. They will never reach PAO2 more than 100, even though if you give 100% oxygen. Because there's that there will always a mixture of blood. Okay, uh tapi uh you correctly mentioned uh a lot of I mean usually I mean in, in ideal situation, children with cyanotic heart disease, they will become polycythemic because the body will compensate lah, because there's not enough oxygen in the blood. Then in the artery, there's not enough oxygen. So what they did is they will increase the amount of hemoglobin to increase the oxygen carrying capacity from when to increase the oxygen carrying capacity in the body lah, because they need more so the more active the child the, the growing child they they should have higher higher uh, hemoglobin usually we aim for those with scientific heart disease we aim the hematocrit should be more than 40 less than 40 is considered anemia lah, in those with uh, usually 40 to dalam 14 to 15 lah, hemoglobin uh, HB level. Macam kalau budak biasa kan, even budak biasa, we won't transfuse unless if HB less than 8. Okay, like in, in normal children. Or if it's a, if, if patient symptomatic. Tapi in cyanotic heart, we always aim HB uh, hematocrit of 40. Less than that, we have to transfuse. However, because IDA is very common in this country, so a lot of them affected with IDA, uh, so they've got low hemoglobin. So you won't be surprised that in your exam, uh, a child with diagnosis of cyanotic heart disease, but they don't look cyanose. But they do have clubbing. Okay, they do have clubbing, but they don't look cyanose because a lot of a lot of the children uh, in our setting they've got IDA lah on top. Okay, from that. Memang kalau dalam buku kalau you baca, when you examine child with cyanotic heart. One of the things you have to look at the conjunctiva, kan? Conjunctiva, they are the suffusion, lah. Conjunctiva is suffusion. It's, uh, what you call it? Uh, litoric, lah. It's not litoric, uh, conjunctiva. Okay, but that's not the case, lah, most of the time. Especially the cat. Our area touch sure content, tapi kalau Kelantan tu memang a lot of IDA, lah. Okay, any other questions? Sorry, Doctor. I would like to ask a question, but this one is in, uh, in regards to the previous slide. Mm -hmm. So, um, usually, kalau patient with hypercalcemia in adults, they can present with bone, moan, groan, and stone. But mm -hmm. for pediatric, do they have any similar features? Or later, later. Uh, in your next, they won't have features. Uh, uh, for example, like William, can William usually the hypercalcemia will resolve as the time as times goes. So by the time of the age, uh, mean uh, childhood kan, macam dah lima enam tahun, usually they won't have that problem with hypercalcemia. It's a transient. Oh, transient. Uh, tapi in your needs, most of the time they don't have symptoms. Oh, they don't have even, even like no changes in the feeding pun tak ada. Uh, sometimes lah, kalau yang very severe tu, you ada nampak irritability sikit, feeding oh. intolerance. But it's a very non-specific non, uh, symptom, sir. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Okay, come. Mm, doctor, I would like to add, uh, usually the calcium will be normalized around age of 12 months. Following uh, baby. Uh -huh. Age okay. of 12 months, huh? Good. Okay, okay, next. Very good. Uh, okay, I, because the next presenter will be presenting her own slide, so I'll stop my share now. Okay. Uh, Anissa, I, uh, I'll pass the floor to you. Okay. 
Can you see my slide? So uh, today I'll be presenting about anatomy of the great, great vessel of the heart. Uh, as we all know that there are five great vessels of the heart which are that live and enter the both sides of the heart. Uh, for the right side, there are I, IVC, inferior vena cava, superior vena cava, and the pulmonary artery. While for the right side, there are the pulmonary vein and also the iota. So <clears throat> basically, uh, the right side bring the deoxygenated blood and the left side bring the oxygenated blood. So, uh, and in human circulation, there are two different separate systems, which are the pulmonary system, pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation. So for the systemic circulation, it consisted of the uh, iota that bring out the oxygenated blood through the systemic circulation and that the, the one that bring into the heart bag is the IVC and the SVC. While for the pulmonary circulation, which are the pulmonary vessel, the vein and the artery. Okay, so we go first to the IVC, which is the largest uh, vein in the heart. And the IVC uh, starting from the, uh, from the conversion at, at the lowest point, from the conversion of the iliac, iliac vein. And then as it goes through along to the right atrium, it receives several, several uh, drainage from the vein, which are the renal vein, the suprarenal vein, the lumbar, and also the hepatic vein. And as it enters into the SVC opening of the right atrium, which is at the inferior, we, uh, it is correspond to the third, uh, to the fifth intercostal cartilage. Okay. And then, and you know that the IVC drains all the blood from the lower extremity. And for the SVC, uh, which is also the same, uh, brings the deoxygenated blood, which from the upper extremity and the head. It also receives several uh, drainage from the vein, which are the um, eye internal jugular, and then the subclay vein, as well as the thyroid vein. And it also receives the bypass vein, which from the IVC, the zygous vein. And the most important part of the SVC is that it also receives the lymphatic drainage from the thoracic lymphatic duct. And then as it enters the in, from to the superior part of the uh, right atrium um, into the in, to the right atrium, and then all the blood will, will, will be pushed out into the right ventricle, and then into the uh, pulmonary valve into the and and as it goes through the pulmonary valve, it will it will run to the pulmonary artery, and just right after it uh, enter the pulmonary artery, there is dilated area, you can see here. Can you see my precursor? Uh, the dilated area here called the pulmonary uh, sinus, uh, where this, this area is to prevent the cups from the, the cusp of the valve from sticking to the pulmonary artery. And then the deoxygenated blood will be bring out to the lung by the pulmonary artery for the gas exchange. And then the, after the gas exchange happened, the oxygenated blood will be bring back to the heart, to the left atrium, through the four opening of the pulmonary vein, which the two superior, two inferior, or two right and two left. And the pulmonary valve is also called as a buffless valve because it doesn't need to go against the gravity. And the last uh, part of the eye of the great vessel is the iota, this one. Okay, so uh, the iota having subdivision of the ascending, the aortic arch, and the descending. And the descending part is further divided into the thoracic part and also the abdominal aorta. So let's go to the first part, which is the ascending part. Uh, after the blood bring from the, was, was brought to, from the uh, left atrium into the left ventricle and goes into the uh, aortic valve, uh, same as the uh, vein, same as the pulmonary artery, it also have a dilated area called the aortic sinus. This diatic sinus will branch into two uh, branches of the coronary artery, the right and left. The, that was the first branch. And then the second branch was is at the uh, IoT arch, which uh, it gives off three branches, major branches, the microcephalic trunk, which further divide into the right subclavian and also right common carotid. And then the second branch is the left common carotid artery, and the last is the left subclavian artery. So, uh, for the IoT arch, there also uh, other part which is important, which is the carotid body that uh, play part for the baroreceptor. 
and also the chemoreceptor, the sensory, chemical sensory. So this baroreceptor will detect any changes in the pH while the <coughs> chemoreceptor will detect any changes in the blood pH, oxygen and also, the, uh, and also carbon dioxide level. And all these changes in the parameter will be sent uh, send impulse into the medulla oblongata before being translated by the brain and change, uh, send feedback to the autonomic nervous system. And then uh, for the descending part, which uh, first is the thoracic iota, it gives branch of the bronchial branches, the spinal branches, esophageal, and also as well as the phrenic branches. And the last part is uh, of the descending iota is the abdomen iota, which just started below the diaphragm. And it gives branch of the, it's not stated here, but uh, suprarenal and renal artery. And the, uh, the descending iota end by the bifurcation of the uh, right, right and left uh, iliac artery. So I think that's all for the, for the anatomy of the great vessels. And okay. okay, so let's, rough, uh, let's briefly go. Uh, let's briefly identify and uh, leave your presentation on. Uh, so let's briefly uh, go to one uh, one by one and look at the site of pathology. Lah. So let's go to the first outer again. Outer. So where is PDA usually? PDA is uh, uh, just Special. after the PDA uh, from the pulmonary artery to the atrophyota. Okay, so it's actually branched out from the arch of iota. Huh? Most mm -hmm. of the time, it's, it's, it appears between left common carotid and also left mm -hmm. subclavian artery uh, mm -hmm. around that area. Uh, but sometimes it can be, but around there, huh? it can be in between the uh, brachiocephalic and also common carotid, or it can be between common carotid, uh, left common carotid and left subclavian, or it can be after the subclavian. But usually, it has mm -hmm. most of the time, it's actually at the arc. Okay, so what this implies, okay, the arc is actually supplying the upper limb and also the head. Okay, can because it supply the head, okay, it supplies the head, the the brain. Therefore, Allah make it wonderful that you don't have mixing. Actually, most of the scientific heart, they don't get mixing, uh, at this area. They don't get mixing unless. If the defect is actually uh, at the right side, ataupun defect they actually uh, usually at the right side lah. Those defect at the right side, they have mixing uh, very early. But other other scientific heart, they don't have mixing at the uh, at the arc level, at the outer arc level. They've got the mixing after the post PDA. Okay, faham kan? Because a lot of because the mixing is post PDA because at the PDA level, in scientific heart, a lot of time when they, when especially those that are ductal dependent, so they've got right side blood from the right side from the from the right side, the deoxygenated blood from the right side, will actually uh, it's a right to left shunt, so it's from deoxygenated blood from the right side will shunt to the left side and mix post ductally, from not. Okay, will mix post ductally, so. That's why one of the best, uh, one of the method uh, to diagnose doctor dependent heart, uh, scientific heart disease or uh, doctor dependent scientific heart disease is by, by, look, by comparing the SpO2 of the upper limbs and lower limb. Okay. If there's a discrepancy between the upper limb and lower limb SpO2, there is a, it means there is a, a mixing post ductally from the so there's only two conditions that can cause mixing post ductly. There are a few other very rare, rare, rare conditions now. But in general, there's only two conditions that cause post ductal mixing. Or, uh, actually there's three, lah, three conditions. Post ductal mixing or reduced SpO2 in the lower limb. There's only about, there's only three conditions. Okay, one is cyanotic heart disease, ductal dependent cyanotic heart disease. Okay, if a baby, you look at the SpO2 at the upper limb and lower limb, there's a discrepancy of more than three, then chances are this child has a doctor dependent cyanotic heart disease. Okay, that's number one. Or there's a shunting right to left shunt at the PDA level. Okay, two number one. The second, which is more common, is actually lung pathology, the PPHN. 
persistent pulmonary hypertension of newborn because there's too the pressure in the pulmonary is very high so it's uh, it's shunned back so there's a reverse flow uh, reverse flow of blood from the right side to the left side uh, left side so it's a right to left shunt through the PDA so there will be mixing post ductally so this is when you get uh, you will find the uh, discrepancies between upper limb and lower limb SpO2 and the third one is coarctation of the aorta especially the the severe coarctation critical coart or severe coarctation you will get discrepancies between SpO2 upper limb and lower limb that's why one of the um, one of the earliest uh, investigation that you have to do uh, when you approach a child with sinusitis is by palpating the bilateral femoral pulse that's number one this is I'm talking about infant uh, in units and in units because most of these conditions diagnosed in units so first make sure in any in any uh, cardiac cases uh, examination you have to check the bilateral femoral pulse okay and ideally would like to compare with the upper limb okay but in your neck it's very difficult huh, because the heart rate is very high so at least you palpate the both both femoral if the femoral is weak chances are this child have uh, stenosis coarctation of delta or critical coart okay uh, two number one huh. and then the other one is you have to offer you have to say i would like to assess the spo2 i would like to compare the spo2 between upper limb and lower limb Okay, that's number one, and uh, that's number two, and then you you have to you have to say, I want to compare the BP upper limb and lower limb. Okay, for me, okay, that's pathology around there lah. The at the co-op, usually the PDA is there, so you can get sin a synotic, which is the PDA itself, and synotic uh, when you get left to right shine uh, at the duct level. Okay, and then the uh, pulmonary vein. The main pathology at pulmonary vein is the TAPVD. Okay, TAPVD is a total anomaly of pulmonary vein drainage. The TAPVR. Uh, so what happened is we've got four pulmonary vein. Okay, remember, a lot of us, at least about 10, 20 of us, we don't we've got uh, anomaly at the pulmonary vein, but this will be undetected. Unless you do echo, then you you'll notice yeah. Because what happens sometimes some people they only got two pulmonary vein that enter the right left ventricle, the other two will enter somewhere else. Most of the time it'll be it will enter the right atrium. Okay. From mm -hmm. uh, some some of us when we did echo, maybe two or three of our pulmonary vein enter the left uh, left atrium, the other one maybe enter the right atrium. Or oh, the other one maybe enter back to inferior vena cava or superior vena cava. Okay, this is what we call partial uh, venous anomalies, uh, anomalous venous return. This is partial anomalous venous return. They, they are most, most of them asymptomatic. Okay. However, sometimes they can get uh, heart failure lah, depending on where the pulmonary vein inserted. Okay. In TAPVD, all the four did not enter did not uh, enter the left atrium. Instead, it enter it is supracardiac, which is it enter the uh, pulmonary artery or superior vena cava or cardiac cardiac TAPVD, which means it enter straight to the uh, right atrium, straight to the right ventricle, or occasionally to the left ventricle. Or infracardiac, which is the worst, is enter the inferior vena cava. Okay, from not. So that's why they become sinus because if it's enter anything not I mean it's enter uh, it, uh, at the right side I mean anything uh, at the right side which is the superior vena cava or inferior vena cava or right side right atrium or right ventricle then they will get a collect they will get a parallel circulation so the right side will enter with circle at the right side the left side with circle the circulation of the left of the systemic circulation will just circulate around there and the pulmonary circulation will circulate around there so they will be they will need a mixing uh, a conduit lah, which is a PDA or ASD to survive similar to TGA they will become similar to TGA so TAPVD are very similar to TGA in terms of the pathology there will be a we call it a collateral 
uh, not correct, a parallel uh, circulation. Okay. okay, without mixing. So they will vary ductor dependent. Lah. They, will do, uh, they will be ductor dependent or they will require ASD lah, for mixing. Okay, lah, uh, the rest essential time important. Lah. The rest you have the uh, pulmonary stenosis. Uh, yeah, those tak, not important. Lah. Okay, form not. Ideally, I have to draw lah, tapi macam I tak tahu macam nak draw dekat guna zoom ni. Okay, ada soalan? Uh, doctor, I would like to ask oh. about TAPVR. Hmm. Uh, in essence, said that there is uh, when macam a clinical manifestation tu, dia ada divide, divide into infant with obstruction or infant without obstruction. So, obstruction is actually occur at where, doctor? Pulmonary oh. vein ke? Obstruction dekat pulmonary vein, yes. Oh. Hmm. Dia macam ni. Obstruction means uh, jat, jat, eh. I am not sure lah jat, eh. Kalau obstruction jat, eh, jat, eh. Dia depends on the entry Here is it Okay, here. Okay, uh, so that, there's a four types, kan? Supra cardiac, cardiac, infra cardiac, and mixed type. Okay, uh, obstruction, uh, occur. Kalau, Dekat insertion tu, I mean insertion of pulmonary vein to the heart and eh, to the heart or to the vessel if there's obstruction. For example, if they enter uh, near the valve ataupun uh, enter at the high pressure punya area macam uh, Biasanya yang ada obstruction is the inf the cardiac type dengan inf the cardiac type lah usually yang ada obstruction ni. Uh, so what happen? Because when they've got obstruction of the flow of the flow of the blood kan. So the blood will actually uh, accumulate in the in the lung. From, because the pulmonary vein is actually drain drain the blood from lung to the heart. If there's obstruction at the end, at the entry, at the insertion of the pulmonary vein into the heart atau into the vessel, so the the blood will actually accumulate in the in the lung. Okay, so with the reduced flow, kan? So bila reduced flow, so there will be congestion of the lung, so they get failure. So the the only things that the the only things that differentiate between obstruct, obstructed TAPVD or non obstructed is actually the failure symptoms. If TAPVD with failure symptoms, then we know there's some obstruction. At which level, then you can never what equal. Most of them is at the insertion site. Lah. Insertion site of the pulmonary vein. Okay, again. Thank you, Doctor. Okay. Okay, we we'll move to the next. Lah. Tinggal satu je, kan? Ke dua ni? The long case problem. Ini boleh pas ke floor tu awak muncul eh? Uh, Doctor, for the meantime, I have one question. Uh -huh. For example, in uh, PPHN uh -huh. or any or any kind of lesion which cause right to left shine, Will the shunting occur at level of foramen ovale? Yes. It also occurs there. Uh, if there's foramen ovale, I mean, if if there for, there is if there is pattern foramen ovale, then there will, there will be shunting, lah. In general, uh, doctor dependent lesion uh, or cyanotic heart, uh, they will need either ASD or PDA. The VSD is not very helpful, lah. VSD because uh, VSD is actually at the left side, so it is not useful for sanitic heart. So sanitic heart, you need to have ASD 
the mixing has to be occur before the lung level. PDA, it can be both. In PDA, you can have mixing uh, post lung or pre lung mixing, post pulmonary or pre pulmonary mixing. For example, in uh, in PDA in VSD, kan, there will be mixing at PDA level. We do we don't call it mixing lah. There will be shunt at the PDA level, but it will be left to right shunt. Um, that's why they get pulmonary. That's why they get uh, breathless. They get uh, failure symptoms because now there's a left to right shunt. So there's a lot of high pressure blood from the left side to the pulmonary in VSD in PDA. Okay, from now. So the lung become congested, they become failure. Okay. But in cyanotic heart, especially ductal dependent, they are also shun, but it's from the right to the left, from the pulmonary to the heart. Pulmonary has higher pressure than the heart because of obstruction, and most of them because of obstruction uh, at the left side. So they've got high pressure in the pulmonary. So they've got right to left shun. So but PDA, they can act as both. Tapi ASD, they will always have uh, right to left shunt. They won't have shunt though in ASD. That's why even in ASD, they won't, you won't listen the murmur at the ASD level. The murmur is actually at the pulmonary valve. Okay. Murmur of ASD is actually at the pulmonary valve. So clinically, they are very similar to pulmonary stenosis because they've got a, a, a relative pulmonary stenosis. Faham kan? Okay, this, I think I, better you, in detail you can tanya Dr. Taufik uh, Lafa atau in the case. Uh, but doctor, for example oh. in the case of PPHN earlier, you mentioned hmm. that the mixing will occur postductal, right? Oh. Uh, will the mixing also occur predactal because of the high pressure in the pulmonary no. circulation? So blood from the right atrium to the shine through the from our to the left? No. Hmm. No, it won't because left ventricle need very high pressure though. Left ventricle will be will be very high pressure. They they can have lah. They can have if the pulmonary pressure is very high, they can have that. This is when when you look at the SpO two of the upper limb, they become sinus as well. They will become sinus. Okay, if very high pressure, then will become PPHN. Now PPHN by the by definition is that lah, which means the mixing. Uh, I mean right to left shunt, that actually causing. Uh, left ventricle, I mean, to pump against high pressure. Huh? So they can get mixing pre or post But definitely the post will be worse. Okay. But at that time, usually, kalau, once kalau you tak treat PPHN, once you punya, you dah the mixing at the ventricle level, kan, then definitely the patient here can die. Lah. Unless you do something, it's very difficult to manage PPHN. Tapi itu lah. Uh, uh, so, Dr. Maksudnya, if we do the SpO2 level compared upper limb and lower limb, the upper limb will also be not be normal oh. lah, Doctor? No, nah, not be normal. Tapi uh. the lower limb will be lower. Uh, okay, okay. Um, hmm. Thank you, Dr. Okay, okay. Okay, Anis. Uh, boleh dengar kan? Boleh okay, dengar dah. Okay, so, Tuan. So, uh, uh, continue with the Down syndrome. So, basically, Down syndrome or the other means is uh, Tysonomy 21. So, what they mean by Tysonomy is because there is uh, of um, extra chromosomes at the position 21. So, because of these extra chromosomes, so we have to be done. So, that, um, due to the extra chromosomes, so there will be extra, extra over expression of the genes at the chromosome 21. Therefore, it leads to the uh, phenotypic anomalies that you can see in uh, Down syndrome. So, um, so, in Down syndrome, as you can see in the slide, the, uh, the features of Down syndrome, there can be a deep muscle stone at birth. So, the strain with Down syndrome, you can be hypotonia. And for the anomalies of the skin, uh, they can they can have a round face, so you can see the round face and and uh, at the back side of the head there will be a flat of foot and and at the eye you can see that there will be upward slanting of the eyes which means that the temporal feature is higher than the uh, nasal feature. 
then uh, there will be also a chicken pico and the ears are small low, uh, low sex low sex ears and small ears and also the mouth is small and also for the tongue and that is for the teeth and there will be also limb anomalies for example as you can see there will be a single palmar crease and also at the foot there will be a we, can, we call it as a white sandal cap or there is a uh, light cap between the toes and also the second second finger and second okay. and other than uh, this characteristic basis and also the limb anomalies they can also have mental sedation or intellectual disability <coughs> and also cardiac uh, congenital heart disease so for the congenital heart disease the most common is ADSD, the atrioventricular sector defect, or other names is uh, endocardial cushion defect. So, as you can see in the right, uh, that is ADSD, and the commonness is the complete part, which means there will be a uh, connection between the atrium and also the ventricle, and also there will be a deformity of the atrioventricular part. Uh, the next clinical uh, heart disease is ventricular factor defect, isolated DSD, and then uh, isolated ASD. Other than that, there will be also, they also can have patient that is exclusive, and the uh, less common is uh, the third of allergy. Okay, so that is for Down syndrome. The any question that? Okay, so, okay, so for DJ syndrome, um, so basically DJ syndrome is uh, due to the micro deletion of the long arm of the part of long arm of the chromosome 22. So, um, so the, the features of Vita syndrome, we can, uh, uh, can look from the mnemonic cash 22. So C is for congenital heart disease, A for abnormal cases, T is thymic hypoplasia, and C is clathylate, and the last one is hypocalcemia. So what happened in Vita syndrome is that because of the micro deletion of the chromosome 22, so it will affect the and biological process. Um, so in the syndrome, uh, the portion of the heart, head, neck, and thymus, and also parathyroid, is from the third and the fourth, uh, from from the third and the fourth in the pulse. So because of this micro deletion, so it will affect the descent of this pulse into the designated place. So there will be a effect that leads to the pneumonic particular attraction to the so for the congenital heart disease, first the most uh, the first is actually the most common is coronal chamfer anomaly, which I will be doing it. Um, so uh, there will be pathology of pelvic, ah, chamfer atriosis, a atriosis defect, and also VSD, and also coronal chamfer anomaly. So between the abnormalities of the great basis of the heart. So, in Nazi, you mentioned that um, the common is interrupted IRT arch, which a client had already mentioned previously. So, the common is interrupted IRT arch type B, which means the uh, IRT arch, it, it was interrupted at the, between the left IRT artery and left subclavian artery. So, and then the doctor's appearances, he enlarge and proceed to the descending aorta. So, there is interrupted IRT as type B. And it also can be associated with right-sided IRT as. So, as you can see in the picture, the, normally with the IRT as, we be at the left side in front of the trachea. But for right IRT as, the IRT as will be behind the system. So that's all for the just and also the hindrance. Good, 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 good. 
uh, I want to add one, only one thing about Down syndrome. Okay, which is you have to know in out about Down syndrome. Okay, from the genetic until the complication and management, because this is a need to know topic lah for all doctors, especially pediatric. Okay, and in Down syndrome, uh, the uh, the problem with Down syndrome is, uh, in terms of uh, clinical assessment, it will be very difficult, because you're not sure whether the breathlessness because they are almost always breathless because they get very poor tone yeah. they've got very muscle, weak muscle tone they, so they, they look always breathless so you're not sure whether the breathless because of the failure uh, poor failure control or because of the tone and on top of that because uh, I mean general concept is Down syndrome they always have high pulmonary pressure compared to normal baby lah they got high pulmonary pressure. So, uh, theoretically, they should have uh, they should have better, they should have less uh, failure symptoms. This, the, failure, the failure symptoms should be better lah compared to normal baby. But assessing uh, assessment of failure and, and heart problem in Down syndrome will be very difficult lah because they've got concomitant heart and you know, also lung problem. Uh, and on top of that, other other problems such as they always have poor sucking, uh, which is a sign of failure. Poor, uh, I mean, failure symptoms. But uh, sometimes they are not actually that bad. Okay, clinically they may look bad, but actually they are not. Okay, uh, I think you have to know lah about Down syndrome. Uh, about D. George. Okay, D. George is actually a spectrum lah. It is a spectrum of syndrome. It's not a disease. It's not a syndrome. D. George syndrome. Dijak syndrome is only one spectrum of the uh, 22Q11 deletion. Okay. Because they can present in spectrum, they can present very bad or they can present uh, not that bad. Okay. In general, the the principle is in the George is they've got a uh, midline defect. Okay. They've got midline defect from top to the bottom. Okay. Occasionally, they've got brain mail problem, but they've got midline defect, especially at the uh, thoracic area. So, what midline structure you've got? You've got your timers. So they don't have timers. So what happens if you don't have, you don't have timers? You are prone to infection. Can you've got primary immunodeficiency lah. You've got immunodeficiency. Okay. Uh, and then on top of that, you've got problem with your thyroid gland kan? Parathyroid gland, especially the parathyroid gland. Thyroid gland is not that affected lah. Tapi parathyroid affected. So what is the role of parathyroid is for calcium punya calcium so they've got hypocalcemia so a lot of time a lot of time dejudge problem uh, in dejudge baby uh, rise from the cardiac problem but they also got problem with seizure okay a lot of them got very poor control seizure and actually most of them the initial presentation is fitted at birth fitted at early on uh, early onset fitting lah and that's when we suspect uh, D. George. Uh, okay, and then because of it midline, uh, the main problem is midline. So most of the defect is actually affecting the blood vessel. So the most common is uh, truncus atriosus, uh, TOF. They've got a double outlet, uh, right ventricle. Uh, they've got, they've got uh, all sort of ni lah, outer punya, outer and pulmonary artery punya problem. Uh, occasionally, they've got septal defect juga lah, PST, ASD semua. Okay lah, tu je lah kot, about the George. And they will al almost always have a uh, cleft palate and cleft lip, especially cleft palate. Okay. Okay, tu kot. Boleh move tu mula, next slide, lepas tu boleh lihat. Okay, and ada soalan lagi? Um, I'd like to ask for like oh. in a uh, oh. case Down syndrome, kalau mm -hmm. uh, on amnio, uh, there's uh, on, on amnio synthesis, dapat tahu the baby is uh, Down syndrome. So, oh. dia terus buat uh, detail scan ke or they see whether patient ada symptoms afterward baru they assess for cardiac abnormality? Hmm. 
usually kan amniocentesis kita buat after the test scan kan after the test scan oh i thought i thought that's how it works kan you do hmm. the test scan at uh, week 10 week 10 to 12 macam tu lah usually the test scan looks anomaly then you detect anomaly then you do uh, cvs ataupun amniocentesis lah then you do cvs first ke amniocentesis first amniocentesis first kot then you buat cvs later boy you uh. buat cvs uh, so usually macam tu lah but in malaysia setting kan because the top is not it's not allowed in malaysia kan except for few condition lah down syndrome you are not allowed to do top in malaysia for down syndrome so if you diagnose down syndrome antenatally you are not allowed to do top because the prognosis is good Tapi if you found Edward ke ataupun uh, high drops, memang severe high drops uh, even, even uh, hemophilia pun, if you detect hemophilia uh, antenatally you can abort thalassemia pun sama so if parents are thalassemia carrier and then uh, they detect baby is a major uh, then uh, ikut majlis patua you can, you are allowed to terminate untuk thalassemia major and also hemophilia uh, tapi untuk down syndrome tak boleh okay Itulah. okay thank you thank you doktor okay okay for okay. mistaken um i need uh, anis wadati is the last presenter so far uh, all of the group uh, have already <laughs> presented doctor. okay uh, actually one more yang i can yang i prepared lah for you guys uh, management of that spell kan I think one of your objective is to learn about management of that spell. Okay, but anyone can tell me what is hypersensitive spell? Anyone? Hypersensitive spell? Also known as that spell. Uh, it occurs uh, as an acute exacerbation of a stable uh, TOF. So only occur during exacerbation is crying, laughing or doing any strenuous activity, only then there will be the development of the sinusitis. Uh, so, mm. what cause? Sorry, doctor. What cause the sinusitis in that spell? Oh, because uh, in those assertional state, there will be increase in the systemic uh, resistance. Uh, so there will be more. Uh, sorry, um, there will be more shunting from the right to left because of the. Hmm, it causes your food. Tapi there, there were more right to left shunt. So there were hmm. yeah, more right to left shunt. Um, huh. is, it, uh, is it because of the increase in peripheral resistance which causes reduce in uh, uh, in venous return? And because of that, which happens in, for example, when patient do some maneuver such as in crying, and during feeding, so there's like increase in peripheral resistance. Due to the increase in peripheral resistance, there is reduced in venous return. And due to the reduced in venous return, it will exacerbate the uh, hypersinotic, it will cause the hypersinotic spell. That's from my understanding, but I'm not, I'm not so sure. That. So you are partially correct. Uh, okay, you are partially correct. Uh, but in general, uh, in general, hypersinotic spell. Okay, I, I, I did mention about pathophysiology of cyanosis in congenital heart disease, kan? You've got uh, mixing, okay, you've got mixing, you've got uh, reduced flow to the pulmonary, ataupun reduced flow to, uh, you've got uh, out, right outflow obstruction, ataupun you've got left up, out, outflow obstruction. So these are the three main lah, three main, mixing, okay, mixing, either at right side or left side, doesn't matter, mixing right to left shunt, and then second, right outflow obstruction okay leading to reduced oxygenation of blood dekat pulmonary level ataupun you ada left upstroke obstruction outflow obstruction for example macam uh, itulah macam uh, critical coag ataupun interrupted arc kan so in TOF the main problem is actually the right outflow obstruction okay coag ni the problem is the main problem eh the main problem with TOF is actually the pulmonary stenosis Okay, what happened in baby? Okay, in baby, in during the development of the fetus, and they apparently they've got pulmonary stenosis. So, so what happened? Because if they've got pulmonary stenosis, so they will compensate by 
by their moving the out so they uh nama term lah apa nama term ni ai pun lupa dah position ah uh, position of our ta overriding ah uh, overriding yes ha so they override the aorta to the to the right side okay from not okay to the right side and then they create the vsd so vsd cannot close because now they need more blood so they cannot close the vsd so what happen they have to override the aorta and then they will keep the vsd open to make sure there's a lot of blood uh, will go through the aorta because if they didn't do that if the baby i mean if Allah keep it there keep it keep the uh, pulmonary stenosis uh, uncompensated then the baby will die okay so tof is actually a compensatory uh, development lah the compensatory mechanism uh, occurred in baby structurally structurally because of pulmonary stenosis so the main problem in tof is actually the pulmonary stenosis that's why in baby with very severe pulmonary stenosis they are doctor dependent they need pda in baby with mild pulmonary stenosis they are less sinus and they don't need pda okay so what happen when they are in exertion or when there's a reduction in venous return <coughs> uh, okay actually vasava maneuver increase venous return eh? the in other for example exertion lah in exertion atau when your heart is pumping fast uh when the when you are tachycardic kan exertion tachycardic so what happen is <coughs> there will be reduced flow to the pulmonary okay so there be like a increase of suction the obstruction sama tapi because of reduced flow to the pulmonary reduced blood cardiac output reduced because heart because when your heart is fast okay there will be less blood come up from the right side from the heart sat laju sangat kan had not enough there's not enough time to uh feeling kan to feeling during the diastolic kan dia akan kita akan feel kan uh, ventricular feeling when there's too rapid heart heart rate so not enough time for ventricular feeling so less blood come out through the pulmonary valve so you've got a critical pulmonary stenosis at that time that's why you become sinus so what to do okay what to do so apa yang you kena buat you kena relaxkan the child kan so that's why the first step is kalau patient datang dengan tap spell try to avoid poking the children the child kalau nak pok kena orang yang betul-betul uh, memang kena ask your mo or specialist lah yang sekali sekali cocok you boleh dapat the the venous access don't make the child cry because it worsen the tap spell so calm the child okay suruh mak dia calm the child that's the first step second step is you increase the venous return kan how to increase venous return okay in adult kan macam kita macam mana nak increase venous return squatting position squatting, squatting kan squatting is actually vasava maneuver is similar to vasava maneuver okay when you squat you are actually creating a vasava maneuver you increase the Vasava maneuver ni is actually increase the you are increasing the uh, uh, intra abdominal pressure so, so that you promote uh, venous return okay from ataupun you are reduce you reduce the intra thoracic pressure kan macam ni you reduce intra thoracic pressure macam you nak reduce intra thoracic pressure in the pelvis inhale ah apa dia inhale deeply inhale deeply eh inhale ke exhale yang reduce exhale intra thoracic pressure ah exhale kan exhale mm -hmm. actually yang when you exhale so you reduce the intra thoracic pressure from at the end of exhalation has the lowest intra thoracic pressure lah barulah air masuk kan ya yeah betul lah you exhale against uh, block ni kan hmm. okay so uh, so uh, tu lah nama dia so vasavai maneuver relax the baby vasavai maneuver okay what other else you can do you boleh bagi dia bolus kan you nak increase venous return you nak naikkan banyak darah you nak tambahkan darah dia so you buat apa 
bagi bolus. So if these two measures not effective, kan you just relax baby tak berkesan. So you support the baby, dudukkan dia ataupun baringkan dia, you support the kaki kan. Angkat kaki ni atas ataupun support dia. Supaya increase venous return to the blood, eh to the heart. Kalau tak jadi, you bagi dia bolus. So bagi dia up to 20 ml per kilo normal cell line. Bagi bolus. Okay. If bolus not working, sometimes you boleh bagi up to 40 pun. Because they need a lot of volume. Okay. If bolus tak berkesan, then you have to do other measures. Okay, what measures you can do? You have to intervene lah. Okay, things like, okay, you can give morphine. Okay, give morphine to relaxkan patient. Okay, actually morphine, we don't know how morphine works, but most likely through uh, relaxation of the vessel lah. Kita morphine, uh, morphine receptor are present dekat uh, pulmonary vasculature. So, it relax the vasculature lah. Uh, itu satu, and then it also relax the baby. So, you bagi morphine, they relax, so heart rate they drop, so better. Besides that kan, bila you ada tachycardic, uh, you will, you tahu Bernoulli principle tak? It's quite, it's quite complicated. Yang ni, I kena lukis lah. Tapi maybe later lah, kalau kita jumpa, maybe you can ask me about, it's similar to, to Hockham tau. It's similar to Hockham. Uh, it's quite similar to Hockham. Because we are talking to, we are talking about outflow. Right and left outflow. Hockham, they occur dekat left outflow. So, patient sudden death. Okay, in that spell, the similar mechanism occur in the right outflow. So they become hypersynthetic. It's very similar. If you understand this, you will understand uh, Hockham. Okay, Hockham, both Hockham in the dark and Hockham in pediatric, in congenital. Hockham dengan uh, acquired Hockham and also the uh, congenital Hockham. Okay, anyway, so uh, kalau morphine tak berkesan, then you give propofol. You give beta blocker. Why? Because you want to reduce the heart rate. Okay, in general, you give beta blocker to reduce heart rate lah. That's one of the principle. Even though actually we don't know how beta blocker works, but most likely is by reducing the heart rate, you reduce the effect of Bernoulli principle. Ha, nanti you baca Bernoulli principle is apa. Kalau you, kalau you tak ingat lah, you baca what is Bernoulli principle. And then try to make sense. Kalau tak make sense, then maybe later you boleh jumpa. I, I boleh explain through diagram lah. And then, kalau propofol tak berkesan, then the last one is uh, you bagi adrenaline. You give adrenaline, uh, bolus, and then followed by continuous infusion. Okay, but usually kalau propofol tak works, adrenaline susah nak works usually. Usually adrenaline susah nak works. Okay, and if adrenaline not working, adrenaline biasa akan berkesan lah, tapi it won't resolve the tax spell uh, fully. So you have to prepare emergency surgical repair. Okay, this is this will be in terms of yeah, in the form of palliative uh, surgery lah. Which is kalau ni baby yang bar, yang newborn baby atau baby neonatal period yang still ada PDA, then you have to stand stand the PDA. Okay, you can buat PDA stenting. Kalau ni budak yang besar yang PDA dah close, not doctor dependent, then you have to do you have to create a petition. Urgent petition. Okay, faham tak? Faham oh, okay. So, the indication untuk operation, for patient with TOF kan, we usually operate <coughs> after the child uh, more than 10 kilo. Okay, most of the time, uh, umur dah, biasanya dah 3-4 tahun lah, biasanya. Unless, Kalau dia ada severe tax spell, that's the, is the only indication untuk corrective surgery in patient with TOF. So when you follow up patient with TOF, one of the question you have to ask mother, is there any tax spell and is there a frequent tax spell? Kalau dia ada occasion ada tax spell and then resolve by uh, conventional conservative new treatment, uh, then it's okay lah. Tapi kalau tak resolve prolonged tax spell atau very frequent tax spell, then it's a time to operate. Okay, saya tengah ada soalan. Thank you, Dr. Um, I, have, I have no question. Oh, okay. Okay, dari sini kita punya rest dulu. Then continue dengan rest for 30 minutes. Yeah, 30 minutes. Sorry, sorry, Dr. Boleh rest for 30 minutes kan? Macam tak clear? Kurang clear, sir. Hmm, tak ada. Kalau kita rest for 30 minutes, okay. 
Okay, okay. okay 30 minutes lah. Uh, so, terjumpa balik pukul 9. 25 minutes lah. Pukul 9 terjumpa balik. Uh, so, siapa yang present? Eh, pukul 10. Sorry, pukul 10. Siapa yang present ni? Um, Anissa. Okay, Anissa, you prepare your presentation. Uh, because you year 5, so I okay. expect you present from A sampai Z. From present complaint sampai ni without uh, mentioning the ni lah. Ke selalu you present present complaint is the easy option present complaint ni 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 ke atau you just present sampai habis? Selalunya kat sini. So you present uh, components by components ke atau you present A sampai Z? Selalunya lah. Maksud doktor macam mana? Uh... Maksud dia uh, macam uh, history of presenting complaint, okay patient blah 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 blah, family history, patient blah blah blah, ke ataupun uh, you just present? Tak, tak sebut pun tak mention pun the heading tu. Ah, just okay. go through the history. Okay so just go go through the history and then everyone, uh, kita takkan stop sampai habis. So I want everyone to jot down what is good, okay what is good about the presentation and I nak you guys dengar carefully what is good and I need the quote I need you to quote from the presentation Contoh, you kata Oh, uh, Anissa present uh, Present the history of presenting complaint in great detail Okay, for example, she mentioned uh, She described the fever as uh, It's intermittent fever, relapse remitting uh, With highest temperature of blah 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 ha, Okay, everyone have to at least two or three good About the presentation and then you have to find at least two to three uh, things that can be done better and then we give feedback at the end. Okay. Uh, doctor, huh. um, before that I will be clucking you first right or? Oh, 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 oh itu buat clucking ni eh. Ah, uh -huh, okay, I'm sure okay, roughly. <laughs> okay, okay, you nak buat cardiac kan? Eh, sorry, I lupa lah. Ah, okay, okay, boleh. If that's the case, uh, you cluck me first. Okay, everyone listen how how she clock. Okay, so clocking dalam berapa minit lah selalunya? Usually kalau with, with prof, uh, with prof masak usually 20 minutes kan? 20 minutes kan? Uh, around 20 minutes. Okay, so we do 20 minute clocking. Okay, you we do 20 minute clocking. Uh, and then I give you time like 10 minutes uh, for all of us, uh, I mean to think what went bad, what went well, what went uh, not so well, what can be done better and then you present the case uh, and then we give it back. Presentation dah masa 10 minit eh? Presentation ni? Presentation 5 minutes kot ke less than that? Usually kalau you guys present Lakin dah 20 minutes, present dalam? Presentation usually 30 minutes with discussion ni. 30 okay, minutes so, so present 5 minute, 25 minute discussion lah. Mm. Okay. So we meet back insyaAllah at 9, eh at 10. Okay. Okay, so kami ni biar je kat sini. So biar. Thank you, Dota. Nak stop recording dulu ke ataupun nak biar je? Kami mm. kat chatting kan kena ada orang komplain tak. <laughs> Boleh pause tak boleh pada tu. Ah, pause lah, pause lah. Ha. Okey, aku pause. Lah. Ha. Okay. Tapi recording ni by department. Boleh uh, kalau leave dekat dulu pun tak leave dulu. Left dulu. Ah, boleh kita masuk balik. Okey kan boleh left dulu lah. Okey. Okey, doktor. Okey, welcome. Assalamualaikum.
Cik tu tak jumpa Eh jangan buat macam ni Risau